Hello guys, welcome back for a boss fight. As you would guess, this is a pretty short video. First costume change. I'm going to change to something a little bit more suited for the job. I like to go with red. I think red is Jean's colour. So, the cardinal virtue of prudence. The word prudence comes from the Latin word prudentia, meaning foresight or sagacity. It is associated with wisdom, insight and knowledge. In modern English, however, this word has become increasingly synonymous with cautiousness or reluctance to take risks. In the context of a cardinal virtue, it is the ability to govern and discipline oneself by the use of reason. To be prudent is to be able to pick between good and bad actions, not only in a general sense, but with consideration to a given situation. Prudence itself is not associated with it acting in a particular manner, like the three other cardinal virtues, but rather is concerned solely with knowledge, the choice between good and evil. Prudence was considered by the ancient Greeks and later on by Christian philosophers as the cause, measure and form of all other virtues. It is therefore considered to be the origo virtutum, or the charioteer of the, ch of the virtues. Thomas Aquinas in particular ranked prudence as the most important virtue above justice, temperance and fortitude. It is a common misconception that prudence simply refers to the practical application of moral principles. For example, the decision to go to war as a prudential judgment suggests that reasonable people can disagree on the application of moral principles and therefore such judgments can be questioned but never absolutely declared wrong. This is a fundamental misunderstanding of prudence, which, as Father John A. Hardon notes in his Modern Catholic Dictionary, is, quote, correct knowledge about things to be done, or, more broadly, the knowledge of things that ought to be done, and of things that ought to be avoided. Aristotle defined prudence as recta ratio agib agibilium. Gosh, I never studied that. Recta ratio agibilium, right reason applied to practice. The emphasis on right is important. A decision cannot simply be made and then described as a prudential judgement. Prudence requires distinguishing between what is right and what is wrong. Thus, as jo Father John A. Hardon writes, it is the intellectual virtue whereby a human being recognises in any matter at hand what is good and what is evil. Father Hardon presents three stages in performing an act of prudence. Firstly, to take counsel of carefully with oneself and from others. Secondly, to judge correctly on the basis of the evidence at hand. And finally, to direct the rest of one's activity according to the norms determined after a prudent judgement has been made. Prudence is defeated with a book, scroll, possibly to prevent to represent the wisdom needed to act prudently, as well as a mirror, or possibly the self-reflection needed to determine the right path. Prudence is occasionally depicted with a serpent, I suppose similar to the serpent from the Garden of Eden. It prevents being able to act against our own self-interest in pursuit of the greater good. Speaking of which, I never really gave symbolic discussion for the other three cardinal virtues, so here's my attempt at doing that. I'm not very good at it though. So justice symbols are the sword, balance the scales, crown, and the crown. It's kind of easy to figure out. Balance meaning to weigh up both sides of discussion. The crown could represent the fact that the ruling, ju the ruling family were sources of justice way back then, and the sword was be basically the tool to meet out said justice. Now temperance is a bit more difficult in my mind. I'm not really sure about this one to be honest. Temperance is represented by the wheel, the bridle and reins, fish, vegetables and fish, cup, water and wine in two jugs. Now just a reminder that temperance is to be moderate in all things, so to me it's really not that clear what these symbols represent. I mean, Classically, the wheel is a symbol that represents the circle of life, or unity, or renewal, but none of these seems really relevant to prudence in particular. I, 
suppose the wheel with the bridle and reins could represent work, but I'm just really not sure about this one at all. I mean, vegetables and fish. Finally, fortitude, which is represented by the armor, club with a lion, palm, tower, yoke, or a broken column. These are all generally symbols of strength. Although, when it says palm, I'm not really sure what kind of palm it refers to. Like the hand palm or the tree palm? Not really sure. And for those of you who are unsure, by yoke it does not mean the yellow part of an egg. It means a wooden beam used to pair up animals like oxen or horses to enable them to pull a load together. Like a plough or a carriage. It's kind of interesting how they didn't name this particular cardinal virtue Prudentia, like mentioned previously, but rather Sapi Sapientia? I'm probably saying that wrong. But Sapientia means wisdom, discernment, memory, or science and skill, or skilled practice, which still technically applies to prudence, so there you go. Going back to the gameplay for a little quick bit, this you might notice here that um, the gameplay is a little bit faster than normal. That's not because I sped it up or anything, that's because sometimes the game will go into turbo mode, where you can perform pretty much all attacks very quickly. And I'm not really sure what causes it, but I suspect turbo mode is the cause of some interesting glitches I've managed to find in this game. Guys, you may have been paying. If you've been paying attention to the gameplay, there really is nothing different about this boss on non-stop at all. And the fact that you don't have witch time really doesn't mean anything with any of these bosses, really. Oh yes, and our infernal demon over there, Phantasmaranie. Of course, those of you um, familiar with Devil May Cry 2 would recognize it as Phantom, from, which is the boss from DMC 2. And in terms of the name Phantasma Ranier, um, spiders in general are of the order Oranier, which therefore makes up the rest of the boss's name. It's kind of interesting that they referenced Phantom because Phantom was a boss in DMC2 which Kamiya didn't actually direct. Okay, just a quick cursory Google means that I am a bit wrong. Phantom does actually appear in DMC1 as well, so there you go, I credited myself for once. Don't blame me because I'm not really familiar with the DMC series. One thing that annoys me about this boss is that by attack it's not very clear when you're supposed to dodge, at least for me anyway. And I used to always get caught in it. And you notice as the health bar gets closer to zero, he does start going a bit faster. And those little bombs that float in the water really annoy me because I don't really notice them and I always, well not always, but sometimes get hit by them. Time to just finish it off here.
And that, my friends, marks the end of the Cardinal Virtues. And thank bloody god because those boss fights get a little bit annoying after a while. I have no idea why you would want this stone. It would look absolutely terrible on you. Much too flashy. And it is good news that we finish this far because it means the next chapter is going to be a good one. So thank you guys for watching and join me next time where we fight John for the last time. See you guys.